Let's go to Jean, who's calling in from Indiana. Jean, what's your question for Adriel? Hello. Uh, it's about Peter. Uh, how did his name get on things in the Catholic Church? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, so if, if you're Roman Catholic, you know, um, you traced the, the sort of papal lineage all the way back to Peter the Rock. And the argument goes that in Matthew chapter 16, uh, this is one of the places, I mean, there are many texts that they would go to, but but there Jesus promised to build his church. I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So th that's part of the argument um, there, Gene, that, that they'll make. Now, what's interesting about this is that these keys of the kingdom are extended to all the disciples later on. Think of Ma Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse 18 specifically. And, and Peter himself, I mean, he was an elder in the church. In, in the first letter that he wrote um, in 1 Peter uh, chapter five. It's interesting how he how he speaks about himself and, and think about this. And he doesn't he doesn't come to the church as you know the great pope of of the Christian church. He says in in First Peter chapter five verse one. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you exercising oversight. And so Peter was one of, of many elders there in the church, an apostle as well, um, and used mightily by the Lord. But the question is, is he really, was he really um, the head of the church in the, in the same way that the Roman Catholic Church teaches? And I think, well, no, I, I don't believe so. But those are some of the passages that they'll go to uh, in order to make that case, Gene. God bless. Mm. And of course, one of the beautiful things about Peter is that we can relate to many of the mistakes, the stumbles that he made in his own life, and then how Jesus forgave him and restored him. And what a beautiful example for each one of us, right? Every single person in the Bible, Bill, I mean, just, you, you, you can't escape it. God loves to use people, um, imperfect people. I mean, that, and that is every one of us, but it is an encouragement also, I think, as we read these stories of these these men and women who were used mightily by God, and none of them are none of them are flawless. The only sinless one is Jesus Christ. And so Peter and the rest of the apostles, they're continually pointing to Christ. I already said it. It's it's the message of the cross. They don't preach themselves, but Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so we need to do the same.